Here's what I learned from getting hacked and blocked from my account for close to a month on Facebook. What I learned, what I would have done differently, and what I did immediately after I got it back. But first, I want you to know that this video is part of a two-part series. If you are in a loop or you're submitting your ID and you can't get it back and there's a constant loop of submitting your ID and not being able to click the link to actually reset and unlock your account, um, there is a video that's gonna be linked in the end screen and also in the um, description box to this video where you can go check that out. So that's the other part of this series. All right now, here is the three things that I learned from getting hacked and had locked out of my Facebook. The first thing I learned is that there are a lot of security breaches and they have been a lot of security breaches worldwide. A lot of them target American audiences. I'm in the United States. And what happens when you get a breach, there is an obligation when they should where whichever account the bank website that you use that got hacked, that got access to your information or your email address in particular, they tell you to change your password. In fact, if you go in your Google, if you use Chrome, Chrome actually would tell you all the passwords that you've saved in your Chrome extension. They will say these passwords have been linked to a breach because those emails for sure are being sold and accessed on the dark web or in the interwebs and people are actually using those emails that they're so if your emails are there know that that's what i know it's not a joke the second thing i learned from getting hacked on facebook and locked out of my account is that the hackers prefer specific types of accounts so if you have a hotmail a yahoo an msn those are the ones they target why do they target those accounts for two reasons one a lot of times when people first join social media platforms they were using those emails older email accounts of their first free email services they use but after a while two three four five years a lot of people abandon those emails and they get a gmail account or they find some other account they do not change out their email that's linked to their social media from the original ones because that means that when you get the alerts to say someone try to log into your account or someone logged in from another isp address most likely you're not even going to get the alert and the way facebook works right now someone tries to log in from another isp they tell you they say in that email if you didn't do this reset your account but if you do this disregard this email now if you never got that email because you don't check that account you'll never know that someone's using your account and they've got hacked in. So that's one of the reasons why they use those old accounts. The second reason why they use MSN, Hotmail, and Yahoo accounts is because the people who have those accounts a lot of times are older. They're Gen X and some baby boomers. And the thing about the older generation, not to say that they're not tech savvy, but a lot of them aren't on the internet a lot. They may only use internet or email while at work Monday through Friday. They may not check their emails regularly. And even if something did happen, they may be slow to react, not know how to react or respond. And uh, so they're a good target. So that's the second thing I learned from getting hacked and locked out of my Facebook. The third and final thing I learned is that Facebook right now or Meta, but I think it's all together, is very decentralized. So meaning that there is a team and their job is to unlock accounts. There's a security team. There's a global security team. There is a team that does business accounts. So you may, may not know a lot of times, and this has happened to me in the past when I've had issues with getting locked out or access. I know that Facebook cares about their money. Meta cares about their money. So if I put in a support ticket, because there's no way to get an individual ticket right now, I can most likely speak to an individual or reach an individual by putting a business support ticket. So if you have a Facebook business account, if you've purchased ads before, if you had some sort of commerce relationship, money exchange with Facebook before, you kind of prioritize. So you can more likely quicker get a hold of someone. The problem is when I got a hold of someone, they were only responsible for ads. Even when I had said something, well, well, how about I can't get my page access because I got hacked. They're like that's a whole nother team. So I kept getting sent to different teams. There was a constant loop and I explained myself and I'm yelling and screaming and frustrated in my emails. And it's like I'm talking to robots because they have a specific finite purpose and goal. And if your request is outside of that, they can't help you. And they're going to send you to another team, and another team, and another team. And it's going to be frustrating to find who can help you. And you'll be going around frustrating to you just for like, I give up. So that's the third thing I learned is that Facebook is horribly decentralized. And the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. And so that's frustrating for you when you just have a really simple problem that needs to get fixed. So those are three things. So what did I do with that information? What do you do with that information about those three knowledges? So here's the three things I would have done differently had I known what I know now. 
The first thing is go into Google, all those accounts that say these are part of security breach, they're on the dark web. Just assume it's tomorrow, one of those emails are gonna be used to hack you. Just go ahead and assume that right now, because if you make that assumption right now, you're gonna go in and change all of those passwords. No matter if you care about it or not, just go change them. That's the first thing I would have done. And that's the first thing you should do. The second thing I would have done differently, knowing what I know now is that I would change immediately any email that's linked to a social media that I do not check regularly. So within the two hours that they had access to my account, but they sent it to an account that I do not check. So Facebook again says, someone tried to access your account from Copenhagen, from Belarus, from Los Angeles, from Scotland, from France. There was a lot of attempts. It felt like I was part of a DSSO attack or something. DSSS, DSOS attack. I was being attacked or something like that because it was a lot of different p places or maybe it was VPNs different remote people trying to hack into the account for a steady amount of time. They were trying to hack into my account specifically, I feel like, and they got through at six o'clock in the morning when I was sleeping and Facebook said, if you didn't try to do this, then that's okay. So they let them hack through because I never responded because I was sleeping. And also most importantly, it was sent to an account that I don't check often. So the second thing I did was change all my social accounts to accounts that are linked to my phone that I check. So that's the second thing I would have done differently before I got hacked. The third and final thing is just be aware. Watch videos like this one. When you see security emails or accounts or articles and things like that come across, pause and read them. And if they're suggesting something to secure your account to make it more secure, or if there's a breach, pay attention to those breach alerts and those emails regarding cybersecurity hacks. So I would have done that because I really just do it because they happen so often now it's easy to just brush them off. So those are the three things I would have done differently. And I advise you, if you aren't in that situation yet, you haven't gotten hacked or you're here because someone you know got hacked and you're trying to help them out. And so you're not in that situation of getting hacked. Run, don't walk and do these three things at minimum. Now, finally, what did I do when I got my account back? So I did get my account back. It was not easy. I knew someone who worked at Facebook security and they helped me. I can't really say who it is, what they did. But if you're interested, I'll put an email. You can email me at createjjgat.com and I can talk and walk you through what I learned. What I did when I got my account, the very first thing I did, obviously everyone should do, is turn on two-factor authentication. So there are actually three ways to secure it. The, the least safe is two-factor, but that's better. Essentially, anytime some, there's a change to your Facebook, they'll actually send you a text versus what happened before, they just send an email. So if you're not checking, if you're sleeping, you're gonna miss that. With two-factor authentication, nothing can happen unless they send you a text and you put in a code and that's how. So they wouldn't be able to log in or do anything, anything like that because it would have come to a code and once the code isn't there, Facebook would have just said, we're not letting this go because if you don't have a code, that means more likely you're not authorized to have this access to this account. The other two, the other three ways that are stronger, but there's two other ways that are stronger. One, you can use an app, um, which I also have and I use as well. And the third is a YubiKey is the strongest. So if you're really, really concerned about that, you can get a YubiKey. I'll put a link below to the YubiKey that I purchased and I got. Um, and yeah, you can use that as well. That's really the higher encrypted. First thing, the second thing I did that you should do as well after you get hacked is immediately change your email address to make sure the email is one that you check often and it's also connected to your phone. The third thing I did is Facebook actually has the option. There's a process under settings that says how to secure my account and there's a little button there you toggle it on where the Facebook will send you an alert versus an email or versus a text because sometimes people don't have access to their text or they just, just don't have access to the email. This is an actual alert that comes up in your phone, even faster saying there's a change. So click that, it might be annoying, but it's worth it. I mean, if it gets too annoying, I can turn it off. So that's the third thing I did is turn that button on. Best believe you do that. Okay, first, the fourth thing I did was close off any backdoor hacks. As you, what happens is the hackers attack accounts that are accounts with people who just don't use their accounts. So I went through my list of friends and anyone who I haven't spoken to, or I don't even remember the connection, would look like they don't even access their account. I just unfriended them. 
especially if we weren't really close, I really didn't know that they may not miss me. I just unfriended them because it's like, we don't communicate. They're not updating the account. Why are we friends? All they are are backdoor access to my account. So that's how sometimes the hackers do it. They backdoor access you through your friend. There's an option to see who can make a friend request to you, change it so you can only get friends requests from people who are your friends. That way you're not getting weird friend requests from people who aren't your friends, which is also a backdoor access. And the final backdoor access is I had a set of Facebook pages and Facebook groups that I had formed and that I managed that aren't really active and haven't been active for like over a decade. So I paused all of those. I don't think Facebook allows you just to delete a group anymore, but you can pause their activity. And I'm hoping that by pausing them, that also eliminates the backdoor access because you have members and there's backdoor ways that people can access you through the, the pace pages you manage and right now if you manage any any facebook page as i mentioned in this video before because of a european union law that's requiring a lot of these social media platforms especially those american-based ones that reach european audiences to make it more secure to stop the dis for spread of disinformation so if you manage a facebook account that reaches a lot of people you have to have two-factor authentication on and you have to verify you have access and there's a bunch of series of things you need to do now on facebook that you didn't have to do before so um that's going to be something before you can manage those pages you have to go through this process so that's when i went through that process i just paused a bunch of those groups like that's just pause them and the final thing that i did that's really important is facebook allows you to assign someone who's responsible family or a friend that you you can contact and they can help you log back into your account so a lot of times you can't log into your account because you're locked out because you're blocked but you can have another friend go through the process for you and help you unlock it if you ever get locked out that's another secure way of getting it actually that should have been like number one on the list so that's what i did so i'm just inviting you to do the same thing I'm not quite sure if that made it secure but i put a lot of security systems in it so that so those are the things that i did after and i invite you to do as well now if you're still in a situation where you're still locked out or you're sending your id in and they're giving you a link or they're giving you a password and you can't the password doesn't work and the link just sends you back to another loop where you kind of like have to send an ID again and they verify your ID and they send you a link and you open up the link and they ask you to send your ID and you're like caught in this endless loop here. I have a solution for you. I have two solutions for you. And uh, if that's the issue for you, this, this the other part of this two part series, um, you're going to watch that next.